Hi, you're probably watching this video because you're a software engineer and you think it's time you moved up a level or you think it's time for a pay increase. Let's discuss some of the conversations you should be having with your manager. Here's some of the roles I've had throughout my career. One unusual thing about my career is I've always started at companies as a software engineer and then moved into these roles afterwards. I moved from software engineer to manager, to front end team lead, to architect, principal engineer, director of engineering, and even technology evangelist. So why am I making this video? I've had many conversations with engineers about how to have conversations with their managers about getting to the next level or getting a pay increase. And it's something that doesn't come naturally to most people. Questions usually come in the form of, am I ready to move from intermediate to senior engineer? I'm taking on more responsibility. Should I ask for a pay rise? How do I do that? These conversations more generally boil down to, what conversations should I be having? Is it the right time to have these conversations now? And how should I approach these conversations with my manager? This basically breaks down to what, when, and how. So let's address those. But first, let's look at the why. So what's your motivation for wanting a pay rise? Is it money, you just want more of it? Is it time, you feel like you've been in your current role just long enough? Is it justice? People at the same level as you, or maybe you feel you're, you're better than, have moved up already. Or is it logic, you've actually got a career track and you've done a self-evaluation about where you should fit. Regardless whether it's time, money, justice, logic, these are all good reasons for starting the conversation. In fact, this conversation doesn't really need a reason. Ideally, you're having this conversation continuously during your one-on-ones with your manager, rather than suddenly when it potentially it's been left too late. Sudden conversations, after things have festered and come to crisis point, are usually a lot more awkward, and there's a lot more room for disappointment. Continuous conversations about this during one-on-ones mean that you get feedback in smaller increments and you can see where you are on the path as you go. It's ideal, but unfortunately, less common. Since you arrived on this video, let's assume it's more of a pressing conversation. So let's discuss what conversations we should be having. The best advice I ever got. Hi, sorry to interrupt. If you find this video useful and you think it would be useful to someone else, please give a thumbs up below. Thanks, I'll let you get back to it. The best advice I ever got was to treat yourself like a business and make this a business to business conversation. Humans care a lot about the past and tangle that up with emotion and the journey that got them to this point. Take emotions out of the conversation. They have no place in a business to business conversation. Also, take the time you've been in the current role out of the conversation. Businesses don't care about the past. They always focus on the future. So that's what you should be focused on. Don't focus on what you think the company owes you. Businesses don't think like that, but they do have an interest in being fair and building trust with their stakeholders. So giving examples of people that are similar to you but have higher pay or better position is a useful tactic. As a business, what services are you gonna provide going forward and what's your plan? It might feel unnatural to think of yourself as a business, but once you get into this mindset, you'll find conversations like this go a lot more smoothly. So when is the right time to have these conversations? The right time is always now, but ideally, like I mentioned, it's best if these happen continuously through one-on-ones. Sometimes it's less about you and more about the company's needs. Most of my promotions have been inflection points where the company had a certain requirement. For instance, when I took on the role of front-end technical lead, I understood the problems we were facing and I was able to quantify them. I was also excited about the technologies we could be using and I had a plan. When I became architect, there was no one overseeing or driving the product from a technical perspective, and I had the best knowledge at the time. I became technology evangelist when sales and marketing were struggling to communicate with a more technical customer base that they weren't used to. When I became director of engineering, I had a clear plan how to get us out of technical debt hell and improve the lives of the engineers and the structure of the team. So how are you going to go about approaching this conversation? Well, you should start the conversation a little bit like this. I want to discuss where I'm at in terms of my position and salary. I'm looking for some clear next steps in my career progression and what I should be focused on. If this is the start of the conversation, there's certain things you should be aware of. For instance, don't go into the conversation with any assumptions. Keep an open mind. Don't start out by drawing any lines in the sand, such as immediately asking for a promotion. This could get a bit awkward. On the flip side, don't assume that you won't get a promotion and ask for a list of things to get there because this will guarantee that you do get a list and not a promotion. Some things you do want to do is one, be nice. That always helps. But you also want to get a sense of where their head is at because once you know what they're thinking, it's easier to negotiate from that point. If you get a promotion on the spot, although unlikely, that's great. If you don't, then leave the meeting with a clear list of things to focus on and an expectation of what will happen when you address them. Let's talk about some of the risks. 
The biggest risk is not having a company approved career track with explicit criteria for each role. Managers will be forced to think of reasons why they feel that you're not appropriate for the role. And then they'll come up with reasons to justify those feelings. It could be arbitrary things such as you need to write more tests, you're not leaving enough PR comments, or you need to be more approachable. None of these things you would find on a company approved career track. It's good to keep discussions formal. This doesn't mean wear a suit and talk like a robot. Most business relationships start out informal via the expense account, but by the time you get down to actual negotiations, things become a little bit more formal. So what I mean is when you actually have the meeting, take your laptop, take some notes, write them up after the meeting, and then send an email with a summary to your manager and explain what you've agreed upon, and then agree on a time when you're gonna sync up and review. Ideally, those sync ups happen in one-on-ones, and if possible, try and steer it in that direction. But ultimately, you should have some timeline and clear goals. So what are some of the things that your company could actually do to make this less painful? Well, we've discussed them already. One is career track and the other one is one-on-ones. A career track should have two tracks, one for individual contributor and one for manager. Each level on the track, whether it's junior, intermediate, senior, etc., or software engineer two, three, four, should have clear experience and responsibilities broken down. Ideally, you should be able to move not just along the tracks, but across the tracks, as a lot of the requirements for being an individual contributor at a higher level are similar to those that you need to be at a manager, such as the soft skills required. The next thing I mentioned was one-on-ones. If your company can make sure that everyone is having one-on-ones with their manager regularly, once a week or twice a week, then this provides a less formal environment to discuss progress on a more continual basis. You can have regular check-ins and everyone can really know where they're at. And marrying one-on-ones with a good career track, you can get continual check-ins with clear progress of where you're at and where you want to get to. But the most important thing is starting the conversation.